Hey church family, you may have seen in the news that the Northside community has faced some trauma over the past couple of weeks. We are sincerely asking you to consider fasting and praying with us and communicating with your church family to do the same. Isaiah 58 6 says this, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed free and break every yoke? My wife Tammy is going to guide you in the importance of fasting. I'm hoping you will stand with us in prayer for hope and healing of the north side of Pittsburgh. We at Urban Impact have learned that fasting and praying are keys to seeing our community transformed and to seeing the hand of God released in our situation. In 2 Chronicles 7.14 it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We need a healing in our land right now. There is violence that has broken out in our community that can only be solved, can only be fixed by the release of God's power in this situation. We saw the effects of fasting and praying in our neighborhood 15 years ago when our middle school, high school choir was uh, rehearsing every week on Tuesday night. There was a spirit of violence that had settled over the community, much like it is today. And our kids would wait on the sidewalk each week and wait for their buses to come. And so uh, as we were waiting, we just noticed that all around our program, not necessarily inside of it, but all around us, violence had started to attack us. One night, a gang of kids played obscene rap music and tried to provoke our kids to fight. The next week, we, had, I, we got everybody home from choir and everything was going well, started getting them in volunteer cars and in parent cars to go home for the night. And suddenly we hear blood curdling screams in, a, in the adjacent parking lot where a woman is being brutally beaten and, and we had to call the police and the paramedics and the kids are very affected by this and it, it, was, it, was, it was very negative. The very next week we came back and again, uh, a gang of kids are waiting to jump our kids as they, as they leave from choir. And so I began to talk to Pastor Ed and say, I, this is hard. And I started dreading going to program each week and dreading uh, getting together because of this spirit of violence that we were up against. And so I began uh, going to prayer meetings and asking people to pray with me. And so everywhere I could go, I, I looked for people to pray. And finally, I called my mother, uh, who is a dear prayer warrior, and I said, Mama, please pray with us over the spirit of violence that's on the choir. And so she began to pray. And then it was Christmas time, and we went to uh, East Liberty, where we had a beautiful uh, concert at a church, and we had a living nativity, and the kids uh, sang all night, and then Pastor Ed preached the gospel, and there were a thousand people there and over 200 people signed cards that they wanted to receive Jesus as their savior and Lord. But that night as the pastor got up, it took him, he said, two years to follow all those people up. But that night he got up and he, he said, aren't those kids from the north side fantastic? Well, we were on the east end. And at that time you couldn't cross those geographic barriers. And so we came out of the church we got the boys on the bus as quickly as we could, but the girls couldn't make it, and a gang of kids descended on them and began pulling their hair out. Kids were screaming and crying, and you can imagine the scene. And so they, we, we separated and got us, the kids into the buses and got home, but I felt defeated as I felt that this spirit of violence was so great that we could not, we could not break it, even with praying. And so I once again called my mother and I said, Mom, I don't know what to do, but I want to quit. This is too much for me. And so she said, we need to, she said, some things are not broken except by fasting and by prayer and fasting. And so we began to fast and pray. First, my mother and I, then Sherry Turnbull joined me, then Pastor Ed joined me, and we began fasting and praying against the spirit of violence. And while it was seemingly under wraps, it was always under the surface, and it would reappear 
periodically during the spring semester. It was so bad that I, got, I gathered, I said to Sherry, we, we have not broken this violence and we were not released from our fasting and praying. And so we gathered all of our volunteers and said, we need to fast and pray against this spirit of violence. And so 60 of us gathered and we prayed and fasted the month of June and then we just left it in the hands of the Lord. Well, that year we had a lot of younger kids in the choir and when we gathered back in September, we had only five seniors that graduated. So this group was virtually the same with some added young sixth graders. And when we got back, it was as if it was a totally different group. And all of the external violence was broken and gone. And there was, and the kind of boiling and seething that we had inside the group was gone. And it was because of fasting and praying. The following year, we, we saw such a transformation in this choir that we decided we wanted to continue to seek God in fasting and praying, knowing that this is pleasing in his sight and that we were releasing spiritual strongholds uh, by, by pressing in to the Lord and pressing into fasting and praying. So we began our fast and pray. We had a young man who was in the choir that year. Uh, he was shot um, multiple times with hollow bullets and had serious wounds inside his body. And one of those was that his esophagus was severed from his stomach and he couldn't eat. And so he was on intravenous food and had gained as much weight as he could in six months, but he had stopped gaining weight. And so as we gathered to fast and pray again, I said, let's fast and pray the calories that we do not eat that God would give them to Sean. And in a miraculous way, he needed to gain 40 pounds, which was impossible in a month. But over the month of June, as we fasted and prayed, God did a miracle and Sean gained 40 pounds and received his surgery at the beginning of August of that year. We know that God powerfully releases his power through fasting and prayer. And we want to invite you to join us to fast and pray. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to remove certain things from our lives for a time, and we're going to add other things into our life for a certain time. First of all, we're going to set ourselves apart from distraction, certain foods, and from the things of this world that buy for our time and attention. And then we're going to set ourselves apart to more time in the word, prayer, and listening for God's direction. All right, so how are we going to do this? We are going to limit our TV time, our media, so whether that's television, phone, Facebook, video games, find what it is that grabs your attention. Maybe you're a newspaper reader. Maybe you have to put it down. But whatever that is, you're going to give up some of that time. And then as you give that up, you're going to press into more time in the Word, more time in prayer, more time in listening for God's direction. So we're, it's not just a fast away from something, but it's a fasting to something. Then in our diet, we're going to try to get healthier. We're going to give up sugar. We're going to give up carbs, or we're going to fast completely, or we're going to fast certain meals of the day. Some people like to fast breakfast, or they like to fast lunch, or they like to fast dinner. All of that is good, but you choose what is meaningful for you. One of my most difficult fasts that I ever did is I gave up coffee, and I am an avid coffee drinker. And so giving up coffee was very difficult for me, but it was a very meaningful fast for me. So don't give up something that you never eat. Give up something that has a little bit of a hold on you and give it up as unto the Lord. Time. Give back to the Lord the time you would have spent otherwise in what we already said in media and spend extra time in the morning or evening with him, praying, listening for God's direction and praying against the violence in our city. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in just a moment. So how are we going to make this work? Well, we are going to pray some specific things. Remember in Matthew 16, 19, Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so as we fast and pray, we are going to bind the spirit of violence that is descended on our community. And we are going to release or loose the spirit of peace. We are going to pray for shalom, unity, protection, and reconciliation in our neighborhood streets, 
homes, and urban impact programs. Next, we're going to bind the spirit of apathy, loose the spirit of purpose, pray for ambition, enthusiasm, and incentive. We are going to bind the spirit of heaviness and fear, and we are going to loose the spirit of revival and pray for a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit to rise up. Remember, it is important not just to bind the negative spirits, but then to release the Holy Spirit to fill the places where the demonic has been. Finally, we will pray in the authority of Jesus Christ that he would break the enemy's strongholds. We will pray these requests over the north side, over the ministry for the coming year for Urban Impact. Thank you so much. And if you decide to pray with us, I would really encourage you to go online, www.uifpgh.org. And there you'll find all the information that you need. You can join us in our newsletter. You can become part of the team. We'd love to have you. But more than anything, we need you to fast and pray. God bless you.